What's going on internet? IG back again today and we are looking at probably one of the most requested distributions I have ever gotten when it comes to reviewing uh, and looking into different Linux distros and desktop environments and that is Deepin. Deepin Linux. They recently, last week, had their 15.7 release. So that is what we are checking out today. Brought to you by Lolio. If you ever want to set up a personal self-hosted cloud for your friends and family who are running the standard iOS, Android, PC, Mac kind of setup, then definitely stick around to hear from our sponsor for this episode at the end of the video. All right, so deep in Linux. Uh, so Deepin has quite a quite a, a, a long, rich history. Uh, it is a, and probably the first thing that, that comes up in every online review that you can find about Deepin, they're very quick to mention that it is a Chinese distribution. And the only reason that that comes up, I feel, is because it takes on a certain aesthetic which is very, uh, very representative of what that particular uh, demographic and what that particular market value. Uh, and at the moment, that is uh, an, a lot of, uh, I guess, criticism has been leveled at Deepin for its, uh, for its, um, I guess, copying or in inspiration that it takes from from Apple and Mac and iOS, and uh, and I can see where that comes from. But at the same time, they're definitely today they they branch out considerably, and they've got their own ideas about what is an efficient use of space, what is a what is a an effective, um, productive desktop environment. And I kind of like that. And I kind of like having a different, like fundamentally different desktop environment to play around with. So today's video, I'm not gonna go too much in depth. What I am gonna do is spend some time digging into the fundamentals of what this desktop environment does differently to some of the other standard options out there in the open source world, like GNOME and KDE. And then I'm gonna talk about the distribution more as a whole. So starting off with the actual desktop environment, first of all, I just wanna say, look, there are very few desktop environments which out of the box look this gosh darn attractive. Uh, when it comes to a, a user interface, um, most people would agree that, that Mac OS uh, looks quite nice out of the box. If you're a completely untrained, uh, if you're a complete non-nerd, you're going to look at a default Windows setup and a default Mac setup, and you're probably gonna like the look of the Mac setup. Now, uh, having said that, that's the last time I'm gonna to refer to uh, to deep in uh, in relation to Apple because I think they're going their own way and uh, they've definitely decided what direction they're heading and it's kind of not really in the same vein as much as uh, as possibly other distributions out there. Now, um, when it comes to how to get work done on this system, um, most of it revolves around this dock. Now, having said that, there are a few, there's kind of two key setups that you can have with the Deepin environment. And, uh, but all of the controls are limited to what's in this dock, or if you switch it to a panel, what is in the panel. Um, so that means that you've even got your system controls down here. You've got your network indicators, you've got um, clock and stuff like that, not just the apps that you pin. I kind of like it. I feel like it's a pretty efficient, a good use of space. And, uh, and when it comes to the settings and personalization of this system, it all revolves around this side panel, which uh, you could kind of argue is, I don't know, it kind of feels um, sort of budgy. It's got a little bit of budgy in it. It's got a bit of, um, it's got a bit of GNOME shell in it. It's got a little bit of Windows 10 in it. Um, there, there's all kinds of stuff going on here, but when it comes down to it and you're wanting to change your settings for the, the system, most of it is done through this side panel instead of a dedicated uh, window which to me feels a lot more like um, they're treating this distribution like you would uh, an appliance in that it has its settings kind of built into the main environment. It's not a separate window that you bring up. I don't know if that analogy makes any sense whatsoever, but it's very similar to how an, a phone or a tablet would treat a settings menu as opposed to how a traditional computer, and I'm making air quotes with my fingers, would, uh, would treat a computer. So for example, we're gonna jump into personalization here. You can see that theme, you've got a bunch of different themes you can choose from, a, a, a global light theme, a global dark theme. They give you a few different icon themes out of the box, which is really cool as well. Um, I'm a big fan of the papyrus, um, uh, the papyrus theme that they've got going here. It kind of looks a little bit KDE-ish with a little bit of Android thrown in, it's pretty interesting. 
Um, but also when it comes to the global uh, behavior of the environment, like I mentioned before, you can change it from having this dock that resembles uh, certain other operating systems to a panel that can re also resemble other operating systems. But I guess the, the point that I want to stress in all this is that um, they're not they're not duplicating uh, they're not duplicating efforts that already exist in the open source world. They're not kind of creating something or like forking something to create a slightly different version of something. This is very much its own project. When it comes to how this operating system behaves, it gives you enough options that if you are familiar with a, with a certain workflow, you can probably find something that's pretty close to what you're used to. Whether you're used to operating with a dock on the bottom and having a huge full screen uh, app launcher, or whether you're a more menu driven uh, user and you want to use something that you know resembles traditional desktop environments of yesteryear I feel like there's enough customization in here uh, to keep you covered but at the same time it's not so much customization that you can literally get lost in the options and uh, and all of the key uh, software development uh, projects that are going on that that feed into deep in are all available on github you can go and have a look at all of the source code and all of that kind of thing um, and so from that point of view I think um, you know, I'm not overly concerned about the whole privacy issue uh, regarding Deepin and it being a Chinese distribution. Because honestly, you can change um, the mirrors of the servers to, uh, you know, to more local ones if uh, if the speed of the servers is going to be a problem for you. I've heard that as a common criticism for Deepin. Um, but I don't know. For me, it's not really too big a deal. Um, but it would obviously be something worth considering if you were going to be running this on a on a mission critical, possible, possibly sensitive. Um, um, uh, sensitive data kind of situation. All right, so application launcher, you've got this big old full screen launcher and you'll notice right away that there are deep in specific apps all over the place. And uh, it does a very great polished job of showing you some of these options uh, when you first boot up the system. It gives you a great little video tour that I honestly wish more OSs did if they were after the consumer market. And very clearly this operating system is going after the consumer market. And I think that's kind of the preface that you have to go into this distribution with. It's not created or geared towards the power user or geared towards the software developer. It's geared towards your yeah, average Joe, maybe uni students or users like that that just want a system that looks nice, works well and supports supports the stuff that they want to do. So having said that, if you jump into the Deepin software store and uh, and this is their app store, the software store is a curious mashup of, of web apps and flat pack and native, uh, native packages. Um, in terms of its core, I believe this is based on Debian. I have no idea what kind of version uh, of Debian it's based on. Uh, they're not very forthcoming with that kind of thing. But if we jump into the terminal here, which by the way, is probably got to be one of the best looking terminals out there. You can see that we're running absolutely not the latest kernel. Um, so that is what it is. Uh, so I don't really know the technicalities behind what version of Debian that this is based on, but it's, it's its own beast. It's been rolling for a while. So I guess, you know, take it for what it seems. It seems pretty stable. Is it a bit messy? Eh, possibly. Um, but for the kind of crowd that these guys are going after, they want as much familiar software and, and services in here as possible. And again, you'll notice that a lot of this stuff is appealing to the Chinese market. So a lot of the, uh, a lot of the apps and services that they feature are going to appeal to that audience as opposed to, um, you know, as opposed to a more Western audience. Presentation of the software center, I think is great. The descriptions uh, for uh, some of the software and some of the translations can be a little bit uh, iffy at times, but as best I can tell, they do a pretty good job of aggregating a lot of what uh, the best software that you can run on Linux, uh, including a lot of the common apps and services that, uh, that their particular target market are going to want access to. Um, now, also, I will say that their, the quality of their built-in apps is actually pretty staggering as well. Um, not, only, not only look and feel wise, but functionally, I feel like they've got a fair bit going on here as well. As you can see, just out of the box, you've got a movie player, you've got screenshots, you've got the terminal, screen recorder, voice recorder, you've got cloud printing options, you've got uh, driver managers, calendars, calculators, all of this stuff that's been custom coded for the Deepin project. And again, all of this stuff is available on GitHub that you can go and check it out 
for yourself. Now, the beauty of that is also you can actually uh, install and run a lot of this software on other distributions, including uh, Manjaro or a Manjaro base which means that uh, there's actually a Manjaro community respin using the deep in desktop environment, which I think is a curious project in and of itself. But the specific improvements that have been made to this particular version, and I'm kind of going to finish up with these, is that uh, they're definitely going after the whole performance narrative. They've done their best to optimize the system for uh, for a, a smaller ISO size. They've tried to limit how much memory it uses out of the box. And they've also done a lot to try and improve battery life uh, so that this can perform better on laptops over the long run. Now, uh, I'm actually referring to some uh, some pretty excellent, uh, pretty excellent write up here explaining a lot of the thoughts behind Deepin from Fossmint. So I'll chuck that in the description below. Um, but in terms of um, the overall functionality of this desktop environment, it's it's very minimal, minimalist, which I like. There's not a whole lot going on here to get you confused. Um, the the use of hot corners. I really like the idea of the fact that you can utilize a lot of these uh, hot corners to do different uh, to do different actions, whether it's launching the window, closing windows, control center, that kind of thing. Um, the wallpapers, and this is a really shallow thing to say, but the wallpapers in this uh, distribution are flipping amazing. I don't think I've seen a better wallpaper pack uh, on a Linux distribution period. Um, and Honestly, my 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 first reactions and first impressions to a distribution like this is it's very tempting to move away from the mainstream distributions to use this. And I can see why I've been getting so many requests to have a look at this uh, desktop environment, have a look at this distribution, because uh, it, it definitely has, it's definitely won the hearts and minds of a lot of fans from all over the world, not just uh, from uh, in and around uh, China. There's some quality work being uh, put into their desktop environment. It's getting regularly updated. It doesn't seem like this project's going anywhere anytime soon. And uh, do I agree with all of the out of the box software choices? Well, eh, probably not. But for the average user and for the, for the mum and dad type users that this distribution is going after young tech savvy students or people that just want to have a more attractive operating system. Uh, this is definitely one worth considering. And, uh, and I guess my recommendation, if you're curious about this from a power user's point of view or from a, a Linux enthusiast's point of view, then maybe you'd be better off installing the, uh, the deep in community spin of Manjaro. And that's probably what I'm going to be checking out next. Now, speaking of your mum and dad, which may or may not have Linux running, just in case they are still on the Windows and Mac boat, here's a fascinating service which can help the less tech savvy people in your life get access to their files and their photos and all of that good stuff without having to host anything on another company's cloud. And that service is Lolio. In a day and age where privacy is of chief concern to so many of our friends and family, Lolio attempts to provide a personally hosted cloud that is both secure and incredibly easy to set up and run. So all that is involved is downloading a simple installer on Mac OS or Windows and then allocating a certain amount of disk space or folder size that you want to host. Then Lolio will create a secure SSL encrypted gateway between your folders and your files hosted on your PC to whatever device you wish, Android, iOS, the web, etc., and so on. It's very similar to services like Plex or OwnCloud or NextCloud, that kind of thing, but without a lot of the complexity that those services bring. So it's definitely ideal for those friends and family who want to get into self-hosting without having to worry about all the configuration that usually goes along with it. There's iOS and Android apps available, so you can try it out for free. And if you like it, it's a simple service subscription of $29.95 per year. And a special thanks to Lolio for sponsoring today's episode of the show. So I recommend checking it out at the link in the description below. Well, that'll be all from me, folks, in, the, in this week's episode. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe, and I will catch you all in the very next video. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>